Welcome back. In the last video, um, I talked about different interest methods. It was a from the mailbag question. Someone asked about different ways of calculating interest. And I did the normal ones like, you know, 30 over 360 and other methods. Um, but I had a couple other things to point out on this spreadsheet, so here goes. The first thing is you can do a simple interest-only calculation, put in a couple years of interest, and if you do, and make it interest only, then the payment, we can see here there's no principal until month 25. That part's pretty easy. And then over here we can see that the payment is just saying, hey, if you're in an interest only period, the payment is equal to the interest, which like everything in finance is kind of obvious when I say it, but until I do, it's not, right? That's all it is, just if uh, it's interest only, the payment is equal to the interest. Otherwise, don't sweat it. That's that piece. I'll put that back to zero. The other thing that's worth pointing out is we have down here different tests to figure out how big of a loan we should give. Um, you know, and this is pretty much usually the way this works. You have a few different tests and an underwriting model. So for example, here we have a debt coverage ratio test based on an amortizing or an interest only basis. We have a debt yield test, we have a loan to value test. And then based on these, it grinds out the smallest number. You know, banks are conservative, right? They do a few different tests to see how much money they should lend you. And then they figure now that we've done the math, we'll lend you the least money possible, right? Because again, they want to be conservative. So for example, in this case, there's a debt yield calculation saying that it has to be at least uh, based on a 9%. And so this is saying take the G2, which is the NOI, divided by the 9%. And based on this debt yield, it came out with 1.1 million. And they won't give you a loan bigger than that. Obviously, these numbers you know, vary. Um, and I'm not going to try to get into any deep sight, insight into an underwriting model other than to say there might be different tests in an underwriting model, and then basically the loan has to pass all four in this case. Um, awesome. The other thing to point out that this underwriting model has, in addition to get debt coverage tests based on, say, an amortizing loan, an interest only. Let me turn off Grammarly. Grammarly is so annoying. It's always poking up. I mean, it's great for email writing, but horrible for spreadsheets. Uh, we've got like an amortizing test, uh, if you're amortizing the loan, if it's interest only, a simple debt yield, some loan to value, which in this case is saying, take the 65, multiply it by the 2 million. We're not gonna give you more than 65 LTV. You know, fine, whatever. And then finally, the other thing that this little underwriting model has here is a weighted average life. A weighted average life calculation is basically a way of saying, how long is money out for? So if you have a 10-year loan and a 25-year amortization schedule, that is to say it's being paid off over 25 years, even though the money's out for 10, a question a lender might have is, well, on average, how long is my money out for? And you can see it comes up here and says, well, on average, your money is out for 8.76 years, right? So this is basically um, kind of your 50th percentile, if you will. Now, if you want to get into detail on stuff like this, you can go to Wikipedia page and you can read more about weighted average life. But the calculation is pretty simple. Basically, all you're doing is you're saying, take the weights, in this case, you know, how much principal is paid back in month two times the fact it's in the second month, how much principal is paid back in month nine times the ninth month. Take all of those weights, for in this case, all 10 years that the money's out for. You'll notice, of course, that the weight in month 120 is huge because since there's a balloon payment in month 120, it's huge. And then if that's your weighted total weightings, and that's the total amount of money that they're lending you, 
say a million eighty six, because that's all the prepayment stuff. That's your weighted average life calculation. Or to put it another way, just to think about weighted average life, you're basically saying on a weighted basis, uh, on a, you know, hence weighted average, on a weighted average basis, the principal is out there for you know, in this case, about nine years on this 10-year term, 25-year AM. Or to put it another way, if I'm lending you money for 10 years and the average is 8.76, most of the money is out there for quite some time. If you were thinking about a loan sensitivity to interest rate risk, that is to say, the risk that I lend you money at 5% and then interest rates go up to 6 so now as the lender, I'm losing money because I lent it to you at five in a 6% environment, you know, this would obviously be a calculation that you would care about. Um, this gets used in all kinds of other things in terms of interest rate risk, uh, which I'm not going to get into because it really gets me on the scope of a five-minute video. But um, long story short, those are just other basic things in a loan underwriting model, um, interest only versus non-interest only, different coverage tests to see what loan I should give you, the general rule of thumb being, I'll give you the smallest under the tests, and then some metrics like a weighted average life, which is again, just a weighted average calculation. Um, and it's as simple as just saying what month, how much principal, add it all up, and then uh, divide the total principal by the weighted average, and you get a weighted average life calculation. Cool. Hopefully you found that to be instructive. If you're totally new to loan underwriting, uh, these are things that you'll see in loan underwriting models all over the place. Uh, as always, if you have questions, concerns, feelings, uh, thoughts, and you know want to take long walks on a beach with an Excel model, uh, feel free to share your, your feelings about that. Um, and you've got my email address there, josh at carrealestate.com. And until I see you again, keep building better models.